morning, everyone. We're very thankful that you're here joining us in person or joining us in the comfort of your own home or maybe on vacation. So um, please, uh, if you are here in person, please sign the friendship registers. Love to know that you're here, if you have any prayer requests. Also, I wanted to start off by saying yesterday was a very special day um, for Morgan and Frank. Um, they were married here, and there's a picture I, I want to show you. Uh, it was a beautiful wedding, and Fellowship Hall was just dazzling with music and um, lots of men in cowboy hats. So we want to say the best of, um, of blessings to Morgan and Frank on their wedding. So, and thank you for all who was involved. Yes. And wanted to say a couple of things. We have a lot of kids and adults signed up for Vacation Bible School. We really do thank you. I've sent out an email to volunteers and for, to, for all the kids that are signed up. If you did not get that email, that means that I don't have you on my list, so please come see me after church. I would love to get you connected, and we're hoping to have a barbecue before on the 10th and then on the 17th as well, so there's lots of help that's needed for that. I um, also want to mention fireworks booths. You probably see them all throughout Dublin. Yes. I want to thank all the 28 volunteers or different people that have double shifts that are signed up. Um, your shift is still noted on the front of the church website. But if you're not signed up for a shift, you can share the word that we're selling fireworks. We're teaming up with Briar Hill Swim Team, and the address right here is 3712 Dublin Boulevard. It's over in East Dublin next to Buffalo Wild Wings, and they start on the 28th all the way to the 4th of July. So you can get your sparklers or you can get your blockbuster uh, fireworks there, but it's a wonderful way, but be safe and sane. Make sure for that. Otherwise, take a look. Um, we have swell events coming up and lots of ways uh, to stay up to date with finances or also even to use Amazon Smile. I've been using that, lots of packages coming in. A little portion goes to the church, so it's a great way for a fundraiser. Um, but with that, I will say, let's prepare our hearts for worship. May God have something special to say to each and every one of you. Mic problem here. Hold on. It's dropping. I'll figure it out. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to sing an old song for you uh, that is really fitting for you today and for me this week. Pillows, you are tempest tossed, and you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord. really meant a lot to me this week, and it's kind of fits today, I think, for what Randy may be going, this life of Jacob. Um, it's been a weird week for me. I've had some really weird things, not good, and then I have some great things, and it's just typical of our lives. Uh, but God does remind us, he says in Psalm 40, um, right after he pulls David out of the miry pit, David says, blessed, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the ground and or turn aside to God's because many God, many my, Lord my God are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. Many are the thanks that we can give you. So today um, we're going to focus on worship. We're going to praise God for the blessings he's given us. We're not going to forget about the things that have been tough, but we're going to praise God for his creation in our lives. And we're going to praise him for the good things in our lives. And I hope, how many have a good thing happen this week? Anybody? All right, so let's think about that, right? How many had a bad thing? 
Ah, nobody. Good. So we're all good. No, there was a lot of bad stuff this week. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that um, we can come to you as our Lord, our God, our Savior, and remember the blessings you've given us. And God, I have so many. We all have so many. Remind us, Lord, today that even though times may have been tough, there will be good things to come. And um, whether it's uh, there in heaven, here and there in heaven with you, or here on earth, Lord, we trust you, and we're glad we can worship you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Come on up, guys. We're going to uh, sing the mighty power of God today about how great his power and strength is in the universe and in creation. Um, let's stand together. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command. And all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. They form the creatures with his love and then pronounce them good. I'd how thy wonders are displayed. The
every blessing Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. for passing the peace so if you're at home pass the peace with someone around you or give a call up to somebody and if you're at church today in the courtyard you can pass the peace while sitting on these beautiful benches ryan johansson um scout from san ramon has made these beautiful benches as his eagle project um, there's three of them now in the courtyard so just keep that passing the peace and talking to others continuing even after church but for right now, pass the peace of Christ to those around you with a handshake, hug, or high five. Calling all kids. <laughs> you decided and, it was not for you. Calling all kids. Let's have the yeah. kids sit in the front pew yeah, right yeah. here today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Any kids out there? Calling. I'm happy that you're here. All right. While we're waiting for people to be seated. We're going to play a quick game of I Spy while looking at the stained glass windows, okay? John and Carolyn, I spy with my little eye a dove. Can you find it? On the stained glass window. Where do you see it? Uh, that's right, above the cross. All right, I spy some grapes. That's right. I spy some wheat, some golden wheat. 
Nice. Okay. This is a tricky one. It's not just behind me. I spy someone whose wife designed and made these windows behind you somewhere. That's right. It's Howard Frank. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Howard, do you want to come on up here? And I, I have them right here, or if you want, wherever you want to be. And you could even sit down. But Howard's going to tell us a little bit. period moment for me. With my wife in this marvelous church, these beautiful windows that she made. Did you guys know that she made those windows? You know, when you see those windows, how many windows do you see there? Two or three. Three? You know, there are actually seven windows there. the wheat the wheat windows and the, and the cross window the alpha omega window and the uh, grape window two of those windows uh, I'm sorry three of those windows make up the cross window you can, can you see the three it's it's just incredible um, uh, there are two of the uh, two windows make the, make up the wheat window, and two of the other windows make up the the, uh, the grape window. But what's interesting is the uh, the fact that the windows were made. In my garage, on a picnic table, 
took, them, took us almost a year to make them. Um, and uh, anyway, they were designed by Kay completely. Just, just incredible design. Um, when you when you look at, you know, the uh, the rainbow and the Christ, uh, the cross of Jesus, and. It's just, they're just incredible. And uh, when you see those windows next time you come here, kids, you look at the windows and know what I, remember what I said, how many, how many windows there really are? Seven. Okay. Thank you very much, Howard. And, and Kay, for sure, is still shining her light through with these windows. I know this means a lot to you and to all the people that visualize and just see this, the, God's light shining through. So thank you for sharing. Let's say a prayer before we go to Sunday school. Father God, um, we thank you for the special message from Howard Frank and just that we can always remember his wife Kay and how she designed and how she built and uh, community built these windows um, in a garage and just how these windows have, have stood the test of time and they share God's light and it's so beautiful to see them in the morning and especially in the evening when the rainbows cast against the wall. So Lord, help us to be like the windows, to shine our lights to all that come our way, whether it's in the morning or the evening. And we just thank you for Howard and Kay Frank. In Jesus' name, we say a big amen. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sunday school will go down to room G. We'll have middle school and um, kids with me today. Good morning. Uh, it was so nice to uh, see Howard when he came here uh, a few weeks ago in the parking lot. Uh, uh, knowing Howard and Kay uh, was a, a true joy for us. Please listen to God's word. Excuse me. Genesis chapter 29, verses 31 to 35. It's on page 24 of your pew Bible. This is about Jacob's children. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Now at last my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. So his name, he was named Levi. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. May God bless this reading. Stand. You know, I was thinking about this uh, passage some more this week. I realized um, we don't know the timeline and when she had these children, but there's more to come. And he's going to have all these children within 13 years. He's going to have 13 children. So somewhere, I know it's not by the same woman, but somewhere um, he's got four youngsters running around that are uh, under four. So I don't know how, Le how much Leah felt blessed to have four children under four, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I, I thought of uh, the fact that 
in this story, you know, Jacob, we talked about how he's had some transformation and he's uh, gone ahead and become less of a trickster, but more uh, mature. And uh, how the fact that all of a sudden now uh, children start to come and it's just like, it's like one after the other. And I thought about when it rains, it pours. Um, but I also thought about, uh, for us, you know, in California, we would like it if it were to pour at some point. Uh, I was, I went to, uh, I was working at the fair, uh, volunteering at the fair on Thursday. And when I was driving there about quarter to two, I noticed up on the ridge, the fire started if you hadn't seen that, but there was a fire up there and there were like three fires that day. And just really thinking about all those natural disasters and other things we have to be concerned about in California. You know, there's earthquakes and, and the fire season, that's, that's a big issue for us. Um, but I also thought, you know, really, um, wherever you move, there are natural disasters we have to deal with. There are all, it doesn't really matter where you go, it's always happening somewhere. So uh, I thought about the fact that, you know, in, Louisiana, they have hurricanes. In New York, they have the Nor'easterner. In Iowa, they have tornadoes, which there was one that went through uh, about 20 miles from us uh, about a month before we left Iowa. In California, of course, we have the earthquakes. And then a lot of these places, they have rainstorms or thunderstorms. Um, I, I don't think there's ever a place where there's not some type of weather issue that comes up. Um, and we have to learn how to protect ourselves from those. Um, but I also think there's some good things that come out of storms, good things that come out of natural disasters, not the natural disaster itself, but, but afterwards. I mean, when we, before we left Iowa to come to California, there were, there were people from all kinds of towns coming to the place at Appleton Parkersburg. That was two cities that had the herc that a tornado go through and they were out there helping people clear the debris and to go ahead and start planning about rebuilding their lives. It was just, it was just phenomenal the, the way it brought people together, that cohesion that came after that natural disaster. And so that was a blessing. And as Dean said, you know, things happen in our lives which are just not good. They, they make us sad, they're difficult for us. Uh, they, they just bring us down and yet we can, I believe, find a blessing to come out of that. God can turn what is bad, what is evil into something good. So um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. But uh, before I continue, let's pray for a moment to help the Spirit help us understand a little bit more about what God has for us in this day. So Lord Jesus, we ask you now to be with us as we delve into this section of Genesis the beginning of, of the explosion of the population for Israel. Lord, help us to, to look at our own lives. And as we struggle with the pain and the, and the, um, the things that, the barricades that come to us or the, the decisions that are made that impact us, Lord, help us to seek a way in which we can, can turn that into a blessing. We can receive your blessing and never take for granted those blessings when they come. And to always be willing not only to recognize it, to embrace it, but to be able to share it with those around us. So now, Lord, help us as we look at this passage to again be able to find a way that it impacts our life so we can become more as you've called us to be. And I ask the words of my mouth, meditations of our heart, be acceptable to you. For you rock, you are our redeemer. Amen. So one of the major... Uh, it wasn't a disaster, but major uh, uh, inclement weather that I experienced was in when I was in Spokane, Washington, and I think I experienced one of my first thunderstorms. You ever had a thunderstorm? You know, there's lightning, there's the crack of, the, of the, uh, that sound, and then there's the rain just deluging, deluging coming down. You know, it's, it's not just raining, it's pouring down. And it was kind of exciting because I was home alone, and the lights went out. You know, that's exciting. I mean, it's during the day, it wasn't at night. And the lights went out, and so I knew what to do when the lights went out. What you do is you go find a candle, right? You go find a candle, and you put it on the counter, and you light it, you know, so you got some light. And you need to remember, though, that when you do that, you need to make sure that counter is cleared off of any paper, extraneous things that maybe you had from school that had just ended shortly, and you had something you were supposed to give to a person who wasn't there the last day that you were going to see. And sometimes when that happens, you forget that you, that needs to be away from the flame. So I had my own little firestorm in the kitchen by myself, but it was minor, it was small. But the rain 
the thunderstorm. It, it was really exciting, and, and it was just uh, something that, that where we had not only the water coming down, but we had the trees moving back and forth and the lights being out, and, and it, just, it was just almost exhilarating in some ways. And so when I went to Iowa, that's kind of what I thought the thunderstorms would be like. They're not like that. Now, when they, when they have thunderstorms there, and when they have a deluge of rain, it comes down, and the trees not only move back and forth, but they come crashing down. They come crashing down, and they take out power lines, they block roads, they crash into houses. And so there's, there's this concern. There is a certain force there you need to recognize, and you need to, to honor that. Uh, at one time, we had such a, a major rain that it, we started also having flooding in Rhinebeck, where I lived, and it flooded the park, and we could not go to that park for three days until the water receded back to the riverbanks. And then there's those times when that rain's coming down and it's pouring out there and you, if for some reason, you feel invincible. And so you go out into that rain and you stand in there as the water's just pouring down on you and it's soaking you through to the skin and you just kind of look up in the air and you go, wow, this is amazing. This is awesome. Um, and, we, and, and we feel a sense of God's power there with us in a somewhat of a safety sense. So I learned in Iowa what it means when it says when it rains, it pours. And I learned what it means to be refreshed. And I learned what it means to be cleansed. No, I said, we do need to be concerned about flooding. When we were in Dubuque, uh, where I went to seminary, we had a house. They had houses for seminary students there. And all the, all the houses there have basements. And in the basement was our washer and dryer. And we had some rainstorms there too, and we had some flooding. The one thing that you needed to know is that in our basement, we had to have our washer and dryer up on pallets. And the reason why? Because when flooding comes, it goes to the lowest place in the ground, which is your basement. And it slowly rises up. So one thing I was, you know, that we didn't have to worry about, we didn't do laundry when it was raining and it was flooding because that water would be, could be six inches deep. But there were so many blessings that we had, uh, you know, that we came out of those times that we gathered around together during those times uh, when we would huddle together as a family, dragging our dog down the stairs who didn't like to go down the stairs as we waited for those storms to pass. Well, today we have a story. We, we begin with Jacob begins the, uh, the growth of his family. Uh, he's married the love of his life. But he also, before that, had to marry her sister, the firstborn. Laban had switched the bride on the night of the wedding, and Jacob found out the next morning. Of course, he was upset, but he was growing, he was maturing, and so he made an agreement that he would work another seven years if he could have Rachel as his bride. It seems like Jacob had slowly matured and realized that not using tricks was the best way to get what he wanted. But then all of a sudden we have this passage that comes that we've been starting to read and the beginning of his children start. But they don't start with the love of his life. They don't start with Rachel. They start with Leah. Leah, who her firstborn, she calls Reuben. Now the thing you need to know about the name Reuben, Reuben actually means seen. And what she says, she says, God has seen my misery and so she names her first son Reuben, thinking now perhaps her husband will have a sense that this is his firstborn son. This is the one we'll inherit. But it doesn't seem to happen because then she has a second son. And the second son, she says, because the Lord heard that I'm not loved. That's what Simeon means. It means God heard her, heard her pleas for her children. And then she has a third son, who she calls Levi. Levi, which means attached. Now at least my husband will become attached to me. Maybe Jacob will now become more attentive. Seen, heard, attached. These are all verbs. Verbs that focus on the fact that Leah was not getting the validation that she needed as a wife. It's true back then, women were validated basically because they had children. That was what they did. And she was having children, but still she was second best. 
But then it seems like there's a change, a shift somewhere that happens because she has a fourth child. This fourth child, she names Judah. And what Judah means is, praise the Lord. All of a sudden, there's a shift. Leah recognizes the fact that she, who had these first three children, is still focused on her misery, still focused on her lack of connection. And she should be concerned about it. But now, she has a, a child that she names, praise the Lord. She's taken her eyes off of her precarious, unannounced, unexpected place in the growth of this family. And she begins to be transformed by the power of God. This story today is not just about Jacob, not just about Leah, but it's about God beginning to build the nation, beginning to fill the promises that he gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Leah obviously felt that she was isolated, that she wasn't, she wasn't embraced, she wasn't accepted. But God allowed her to be conceive and continue to keep his promises. And as I looked over those children that he had, and there's 11, children, 11 boys that he has before they leave to go back to, uh, back to uh, Bethel, back to Canaan, and of those 11, there's only one that's born of Rachel. Only one. The one woman who he loved the most, she had only one child. He's an important child. His name is Joseph. And he gets, he gets to a place where he goes ahead and provides for his family who begin to have a time of starvation. And that's a different story. But the one who later becomes a leader in the family is the fourth child. It's Judah. It's praise the Lord. And also, if you remember where Jesus came from, he also came from the line of Judah. We believe that in this 13-year period, that's when these 12 children were born, 11 sons, one daughter. That was a blessing, a blessing that needed to be seen, needed to be embraced, needed to be, be experienced by both Leah and Jacob. Jacob, perhaps, wasn't having the children that he wanted to Rachel, but he still was having a blessing. He was seeing the beginning of a new nation. This is the story of blessing that comes out of this time with Leah and Rachel. It's the line of Judah, who also will be the name of the southern kingdom. We need to acknowledge when blessings come to us, even if they don't come the way we expect. We need to be sure we don't miss God's work in our lives. It may mean we have to walk through a storm. It may mean we need to be cleansed. But it is a blessing when this happens. Sometimes we can't, exp can't explain it, we don't expect it, but it happens. You know, today we are going to ordain and install new leadership at JKBC. New elders, new deacons. Some are extending their terms but some have never been in this position before. I think as I look over the years of, of leadership here at JKBC, it, to me, it comes from unexpected people, people that, that at first I wouldn't think would be the leaders, and yet they do. They come forward and they step up and they bring new ways, new energy, new opportunities, new ways in which they can praise the Lord. And so I'm looking forward to this installation ordination today. I'm looking forward to continuing to work with a session that makes decisions about this church, about where we're going in the ministry we have in the Tri-Valley. This is one of the blessings I have, I think we have in this place, in this place where we gather to celebrate God in our lives. We maybe go through times of misery, maybe through times of feeling disattached, of not being heard, of not being seen, but God is there for us. God does bless us. Sometimes we just need to open our eyes. Just be aware of the blessing God has for you, has for each of us. So today, be reminded that whatever storm that we have to deal with, whatever struggles we're working through, God is there and blessing will come. Blessing is there for us because God is a God of blessing. Let us take a time, time to pray. 
Most holy God, you have continued to watch over us, to care for us. As things come in our lives that are barricades or perhaps bumpy for us, help us not to focus on what is stopping us from being connected to you. Help us instead focus on how you will bless us or how you have blessed us in the past and look for the blessing you have for us in the present and the future. You started with a small band of people and yet they continue to grow and the faith in you has continued to flourish. And it's been over 3,000 years and still we, as followers of you are making an impact in this world. We're bringing blessings to people. Christians are the ones that started hospitals. Christians are the ones that have reached out to widows and orphans. We can be those people who bring blessing around those, those people around us that are less fortunate. Help us to be like Leah when she had her fourth child. When she saw this baby, this fourth son, and she realized not to focus on her own misery, her own separation from Jacob, but the blessing you brought to her through Judah, a child who would grow, who would later become a leader in his family, and who would also provide the line from which our Lord and Savior came, Jesus. Lord, help us to receive those blessings, to embrace those blessings, and give you thanks for the blessings that we receive. We ask all this in your son's name. Everybody said, amen. Let's stand together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. is 
Thanks, be seated. So now we come to a time in our service where we recognize those people and we want to pray for the, those people who are going to be part of the leadership for this next year. So I'm going to call your name, and if you're here, come up. If you're not here, wave, <laughs> or whatever you are. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and ask some of the questions for installation. And then we are going to pray for the two. We have two people that have never been ordained before. We're going to pray for them together. We're not going to lay hands on. We're going to put our hands forward. Um, so I know that we are recommending now still masking uh, indoor places since Alameda made the change uh, this, this week. Uh, but we're not going to lay hands on them at this point. So uh, I have Cindy Cook has agreed to uh, <clears throat> extend her term. Stan Husted. Uh, Cindy, by the way, is Committee Life with Women. And I'm going to have you step up here, all the way up here. And then Stan agreed to uh, extend his term for missions. We have Alice Richards, who is a new elder, and she is going to be taking on the role of outreach, the Ministry of Outreach. Uh, we have PJ and Sue Ann Peterson. I believe they are at a marriage conference this weekend, so they're not here. Uh, also, the Ramses are at that same conference. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm sure it's very beneficial. Uh, Jerry, Lop Jerry Lopez um, was going to extend her time in deacons. And then we have Miriam Ladonai is going to be a new deacon. Come on up. And she's going to be working with our communion preparation coordinator. Joel McGrady Beach, who's extending with card ministry. And then uh, we have Morgan Brizzy, and I don't know why she's not here. Um, she could have brought Frank with her, that would have been fine. She's extending her deacon part, uh, leadership as well. And then Sandy Tomsick, we have her extending her term as deacon as well. So I have you extending your term as deacon as meal preparation delivery, so. Now, some of you have answered these questions before, but I'm going to ask you to answer them again. Hopefully, you answer the same way you did the first time. So, do you trust in Jesus Christ, acknowledge him as Lord of all? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the primary witness to Jesus Christ, and agree to continue to study them for your own spiritual formation? If so, please say, I do. Will you agree to explore the confessions of our church? Will you be instructed by those confessions as you lead the people of God? So please say, I will. Will you be governed by your church's polity, our church's polity, which is our government, and be subject to its discipline? So please say, I will. Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them as you're directed by the Holy Spirit? So please say, I will. Will you seek to love your neighbor, and work towards the redemption of God's entire creation. If so, please say, I will. Amen. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, please say, I will. Amen. For those that are coming on as elders or extending as elders, will you be faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service, and showing the love and justice of Jesus Christ in your ministry? If so, please say, I will. For those coming on as deacons, extending your term, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching generosity, urging compassion, directing the people to help the friendless and those in need? If so, please say, I will. So these folks have agreed to these questions that we've had, but now we as a congregation must agree that we're not only going to accept them, but we will embrace them, we will support them, we will, we will listen to and follow their leadership. That is part of our commitment as a community. God created us to be a community, a faithful community, to work with each other and support each other. So, do you as a congregation accept these people as officers of our church, agree to encourage them to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? So please say, we do. Awesome, thank you very much. So, I want to uh, go ahead and have uh, Miriam and Alice, come down here and ask you to kneel. 
Yeah, you guys are young. You can do this. And so now we're going to, we're going to extend our hands. And we're going to ask, asking God to bless these two as they continue, as they begin their um, journey as deacon and an elder. Um, once you're ordained, you're ordained forever. <laughs> And so uh, we are just so grateful you're willing to accept this position and to take on this responsibility. It is a privilege for you and it's a privilege for us. So now let us pray for these two, as well as the entire uh, group up here being installed. Let us put our hands forward and pray for these. Lord Jesus, you have brought these for us to celebrate and to guide us, to direct us, to give us, be us examples for us of those who are, are concerned about the homeless, the friendless, those unloved, also to guide us as we reach out to those in the community with Alice as she leads up the outreach ministry. Be with Miriam as she seeks to be your example as a deacon. We just ask you to help them to know that you walk with them every step of the way and that you also have brought a community that supports them, that will encourage them, will help them when they fall to pick them up, when they wander to bring them back. Lord God, help them to know that you indeed are the Lord who is with us, Emmanuel, and you're the one that will guide us, direct us. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. amen. So now you can rise. These are our new elders and deacons for coming up on July 1st of 2022. So thank you for coming forward. I also want to take some time to pray um, for uh, in general, and also uh, we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. So please pray with me. Lord God, you have brought us this day to celebrate you, to be blessed by you, and to carry that blessing to those around us. Help us, Lord, to be willing to bow before you, to offer ourselves to you, to be willing to to share your word with those around us, to be your example for the people in this community, to know what it means to worship you and to celebrate you in our lives. Lord, as I you know, travel to church on Sunday mornings and still people out doing various things, you know, they each answer to you, but I see them exercising. I see them going for walks. I see them enjoying nature. Well, Lord, help us to find ways in which we can do, be ministers to those people those people who are looking for a place to grow spiritually, to, to find a place spiritually, just as, just as you had Gary come with us last, last week, who was baptized just this last week. We pray, Lord, that we'll be your people. We'll be your generation that goes out to reach those around us. And Lord, we also pray for those that are struggling right now, those who have physical concerns, that are going through treatments, that have uh, surgeries coming up, Lord, we pray that those will be effective and those will, they will be, recover quickly. Lord, we pray for those who are seeking relationships, who are looking for validation of who they are as a person, for feel like they're not being seen or not being heard or not connected anywhere. Lord, we just pray for them and ask them to find a place, whether it be this place or another place where they can settle they can put down roots and then they can mature and grow just as we've seen Jacob grow during the times that we've been studying Genesis. Lord God, I ask too that you help those that are seeking employment, seeking a calling that they have to find a, a place where they can go ahead and be your people using the skills and talents and gifts you've given them to live out that calling that they have. And Lord, we pray for those who are still wondering, who still don't have a place to settle. We ask you to help them to find that place and to be able to find you, to receive you, receive the grace, receive the blessing you brought. And no matter what the storms are, Lord, help us to continue to seek to find the blessing that you bring to us and not only to receive it, but to embrace it and to share it with those around us. Now, Lord, we as your people come as a community and say that prayer which you taught your disciples that begins, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil and the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up as we go out today and uh, we're going to reprise the song we started with. It goes. Every blessing you pour the peace of Christ as we leave today. Enjoy those benches. We have coffee. We have other things to share. I'm going to share some fellowship time. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.